I'm going to show you how to replace the foam that breaks on the woofers on the Boston Acoustic A60. I've already done the A70. Uh, simple instructions, simple speakers for $26 shipping. They'll send you out the foam replacements and glue, all you need. In there there's instructions of what you should have. Utility knife, screwdriver, Phillips, cotton balls, some swabs, rubbing alcohol. Uh, over here I got started. I disassembled one, four simple screws. There's a gasket behind the speaker itself. I always put back on with the screws so I don't lose anything. The important part of removing this is that you do, do something to identify your speaker wires. So I identified my black wire in my speaker box and also on my woofer. It's important to do that. You identify one, you don't have to identify the other one. Save this gasket, pull the speaker out. You need to identify one of the wires and also identify where it goes on here so you don't make a mistake putting it back. Pull out all the old flaked off cone. Piece of tape or whatever you want, I just use this so I could cut it back off very easily. Pull off all the cone foam that you can with your fingers. Leave the uh, center dust guard in there. You don't want any materials falling inside. Take your utility knife. Scrape off the old Now look for an area where that glue's able to break apart. Take your fingers. Now this is the most enjoyable part to males who enjoy picking their nose while they drive. Just go around pulling the old glue off. After I get this glue taken off, I will take uh, rubbing alcohol and cotton swabs to do the metal part all the way down inside. But I'll use the cotton tips to remove the foam that's on the cone itself. If you use the cotton balls on the cone itself, the little hairs will come off the cotton ball and get all clogged up on the cone. Instructions say use a utility knife or a wood chisel. Uh, I'd rather just not put any scratches on the metal part of the cone itself. But I do run a utility knife across the cone, you could do that. And it will pick up a lot of the old cone. It's okay if it falls down into the center, as long as you got your guard there, you can shake it out. Take more than one lap around each time you're getting a little more of the old foam off. 
sure you keep that utility blade angled so you're not cutting into the material of the comb. See how I make a second lap, more comes off. Okay, let's go outside and blow this off. Okay, I'm out in my garage. I got a lot of that residue from the foam I took off. I'm going to take my little air hose and blow it all off before I take my rubbing alcohol to clean all this up. So you're going to hear a little noise. I poured some rubbing alcohol in a little jar because I'm loading in my container. If I had a full container, I wouldn't have done that. I take a cotton swab, and I'm going to do the outside. Get it all nice and clean. And even down in the very lower lip, I like doing. I figure I'd do it, get it nice and clean one time, you don't have to worry about it again. Cotton balls are cheap, so use as many as you want instead of pushing the dirt around. Cotton swabs. You're going to have some sort of glue remaining, but that's not too bad. Nice coarse surface when I go to reply the new glue, you have an option of putting it on the foam bottom edge or right here along the surface of the cone. I'll probably use the surface of the cone. Notice I roll my Q-tip around, picking up everything I could get. Take a, a dry Q-tip and just go around picking up any loose material. Cone has some uh, loose edges on there. You can either take your little utility knife or trim away or take your fingers and it'll come flaking off. I like using my finger so I get the natural feel of the cone so I don't cut into it. Find spots that I might want to use my utility knife on. By doing this, it actually loosens that material up and I can go around and pick it off. Some of that's actually the cone itself and not the old foam, so it, it doesn't matter, it's just from the factory that way. I'm going to set this out in the sun so it dries up so I'll get ready to glue it quicker. I mentioned earlier you could apply glue along the edge of the cone or put the foam upside down and run it along there. Uh, I found it easier since this is a coarser surface, the glue will hold better. Uh, before I do any gluing, I kind of size it up to see what it's going to be like. Um, what I found different between the A60s and the A70s, the A70s, when you hold it up, the cone tended to droop a little. So you're actually, your foam is actually helping to support the, the cone itself. But these A60s, the cone doesn't droop as much. So anyways, I... I set that in there and also when I go, when I put my glue on, I'm going to reach in under the cone and lift it up and I'll probably touch lightly along the foam, turn it, lift up, touch lightly along the foam. I'll do that and then I'll 
work it until it's all the way around. And then after I get that done, I'm gonna have to lift it up and I'll run a bead around on the metal portion and just let the cone actually drop back down and that will seat it all. As I've done there, I will not uh, go ahead and add any. Well, let's work it back. Try to get it even, just on areas that need it. All right. I set my foam on there. Put it where I want it. And lift it up. If you need to work it, you can. You could push against the hump there. We'll back up the foam. This speaker, I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try gluing, putting a bead down along the iron first. Because it does give you time to set up the other speaker. This was kind of doing it underneath the foam blindly. And it does say in the instructions to let the Glue set up for an hour once you get the foam on. So this is almost like an experiment of which method may be better. All right, time to put the speaker back on. And you're done.